Welcome to the Lovability Podcast. My name is Jennifer Stiers, and I'm here to talk love, relationships, sex, marriage, and everything in between. Welcome to the Lovability Podcast. My name is Jennifer Stiers, and uh, I am here today with the hippie look. I've got quarantine hair, and hopefully soon uh, we will have that fixed. But in the meantime, I decided to go for the whole hippie look. <laughs> With, with the tie-dye and everything. Uh, I'm also here today with Sidekick Brad. Uh, we're going to do a rant today. Uh, yeah. I think that's a thing. What? Quarantine hair is a thing now. Quar oh. <laughs> it's definitely a thing. I was kind of digging uh, when the guys were growing their hair out. I was calling it the Matthew McConaughey look in some ways, where it's kind of growing out and kind of hanging out under their you know, ball caps. Very sexy. I oh, like that. It's awful. Oh, I liked it. I know. All you guys couldn't wait to get your hair cut. That's I'm like, leave it, rant. leave it. That's another rant. Another rant for another time. Short hair guy rant. Uh, yeah, I know. Why, guys get their hair cut every two weeks. Like, I could go, I think it's been two months now, but we're at our limit now. I so do, I do four. Yeah, four that's weeks. not too bad. I know. <laughs> at least you have some hair. Okay, so. <laughs> there's, a, there's that. There is that. I have... You know, okay. I was blessed with a grandfather were, that yes, has good hair. Yes, you were. Yes, you were. Okay. Uh, listen, shout out to you bald guys. No, it's okay to be bald. There are very some Please very, don't send emails. very sexy bald men. Yes. That is the truth, though. Now, I've even dated a bald guy before. Like, there are some very sexy bald men. If you say. I, I say. I say. I don't know. If, is there sexy bald women? Um, Demi Moore and G.I. Jane was pretty damn sexy. Okay. If okay. I can say that. Yes. All right. She was. Okay. Oh. Then, now not so much. <laughs> All right. Too much plastic surgery? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Lots. Yeah, that can do it. Uh, so we want to keep ourselves up and not change what we look like. Ooh. She was so pretty before. Stretchy face. Uh, yeah. Uh, speaking of, you know who the male version of that would be that's just completely... There's a lot like, of them. <laughs> I know there are, but Sylvester Stallone, when I saw him in a movie a couple years ago, his face is so stretched. Ugh. It looks... He, yeah, it's not. Not good. I don't like him as a person. Okay. Yes. So, uh, so today we're going to go on a rant. So I had to have, you know, Psyche Brad is back. So, uh, we love our rants and, uh, and it just so happens every once in a while, we'll hit a hot spot, a hot topic. And the topic today we're going to do, I put a post up the other day. It was very simple as a little quote. And it said, since sex got easier to get, love got harder to find. So, and, and you know what? It's real. That is absolutely real. We've talked about it. Uh, this kind of, uh, you know, put it in a nutshell, uh, summed it up pretty well. But we've talked about it before. The sex thing gets in the way. And we've had guy panels that say if they have first date sex with a woman, they're not going to have a second date with her. In the majority, 99.9% .9 of the cases, they're not going to go out with that woman again. Right, Brad? If you say so. Well, we... Brad. I think it depends on how good the sex is. <laughs> Come on. You're fired. Ser like, seriously. You're so fired. Uh, okay. I'm, then I don't I'm, know. I'll put you this way. Now let me, I'm let me be fair. Now I'm going to have to be the voice of reason since Brad isn't going to no, tell no, the truth. No, no. I will be fair. I will be fair. I, will say, I don't know if 99% Okay. So because I think there's a lot of guys that play the game that say they wouldn't, but they know darn sure well they would. Okay. 99.8% so. of the men... <laughs> Are not going to, because we did ask and we had the guy panels and I've, and of course with my job, I've asked as well. Uh, so I want to, uh, I just want to elaborate a little bit on the post because I felt like what I wrote that went with it is important and I want to hit these points. Uh, Brad didn't even see the post too. So that would also be another reason to do it. Uh, ever heard the old saying, why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? Well, there you have it. Ladies, stop complaining that you can't find love when you're using your goodies for bait. I say women because women do have control over uh, the when switch, right? It's our bodies. We control the when. Uh, and if you don't say yes, then a man will have to keep courting and pursuing as he would prefer to do. Uh, that is what men like to do. They like the chase, ladies, so let them have a chase. Uh, and uh, I said, any uh, good man worth catching. A real man needs and wants that challenge. So before you get back out there in the grind, try having some sexual standards and boundaries. And this goes for you too, guys. So I didn't forget the men on that. Uh, you know, it, 
guys, you're just as uh, you're just as guilty. I mean, I, I have heard plenty of you say that you don't want to have first date sex, and I know many guys that have said no, that have actually had to tell women no. And I've seen it in matchmaking too, where women will move fast and a guy is trying to slow things down because. I think the thing with guys, Brad, and we've talked about, you know, sex on a first date, but mm -hmm. from a reasonable, practical standpoint, it complicates things. So when a when sex enters the picture, whether most women who are, um, you know, normal women, sorry, that have that are healthy, are not going to be just going after a one night stand to use men. That's not going to be the case. Women aren't out to you. Women that are healthy aren't out to use yeah, men sexually. I think the sexually. healthy part is the, is the important part. The what? Healthy. The healthy part. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, uh, but, what was I, where was my point? Because I, we got off on that and now I just lost my train of thought. I hit my head really hard a little while ago. <laughs> I'm going to use that as my excuse. Well, it's not showing at all. I know. I know. Well, that's good. <laughs> You've covered it well. Okay. I think the point you were trying to make was that. Um, when sex comes into the picture, it gets it changes the relationship immediately. Yes, potentially even minutes after, you know. And I think it definitely clouds, the next day for sure. It clouds it for guys too, and that even that's even sex after three dates or five dates or too soon before the intimate part of the relationship has uh, has progressed and started. Uh, men say that if they end up getting going there too soon, then the relationship becomes about instead of, hey, I'm coming over and I'm going to court you and I'm going to take you to dinner and out to uh, for a pit, whatever, a concert afterwards, then it becomes about the sex always. I'm just coming over. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, Netflix and chill, right? Isn't that the terminology? Uh, so, uh, so then the men find it hard to back out of it. So now there's this complication where now they've entered in here. Now there's an expectation emotionally with the woman where she's attached and now the men don't want to hurt her. So they end up staying in longer than they should. So the easy way around that is just don't do it. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely think I agree with you on the part of it definitely complicates things or changes the, changes. the dynamics for sure. Um, because I think on the female side, it definitely becomes more intimate and more emotional and, and it changes things like that. And on the guy side, it, it does some of the same things, but we've also talked about it, uh, a lot that there are a lot of women out there that do go out and just use men for sex and you can call them unhealthy or not looking for love or whatever we want to do, but that's occurring as well, and I still think there's a you know there's a lot of folks out there, but men and women, that oh my gosh, coming out of quarantine, <laughs> like it could get worse a little while before it gets better because well, there's going to be some people that just want to go do that, and on both parties are going to yeah. say, I'm okay with that. Let's let's not do that though. That's, yeah, exactly. I, it's the whole point of doing this podcast today because. I have been on this intentional dating, intentional courtship campaign now that we uh, have kind of a restart, uh, and we have an opportunity for a restart. And I think a lot of people, statistically, uh, in the quarantine, a lot of people were lonely, uh, and they they realized that they don't want to be alone, and realized how quickly their freedom and life could be taken away from them. So there's a lot of people. My business is very, very, very busy, surprisingly, right now, uh, because people have realized, I'm tired of it. I can't waste any more time. I need to find somebody. I really, I've been playing long enough. I want to find somebody now, which is super. I was hope it was going to go one of two ways. People are going to yep. go crazy because yep. they've been it's a 50 -50 alone shot. and frustrated, or they're going to um, decide that they don't want to get back in the grind and they don't want to go back to their ways that, that were not working to help them find love and they want to intentionally find somebody. And I've actually had people use that word, uh, without knowing that it was my coined phrase for the new, <laughs> the new coming out. No. And I think, I think too, as we've talked about, I think folks that are on this page and this podcast and stuff, they are the right folks. They are the right mentality. They're, they're in the, in the spot where there's like, I do want this to be intentional from now on. Um, maybe I've, kind of just played around or I don't want to use the word play around because a lot of us just haven't made a lot of big effort or they haven't met the right person. But I think there is a lot of folks out there that are going to come out of this with, and, and I think there's going to be 
um, a lot of people that come out of it, life in general, they're going to be more intentional about a lot of things. Right. And relationships is going to be like one of Like saving those. money and well, all those yeah. kind and of things. That those they, phone yeah. calls that they should have made yeah. six months ago, they're yeah. going to make and, and some things like that. So I think intentional lifestyle is going to be a thing now too, which is great. And relationships can be in the top one or two yes. for sure. And it should be. It always should so. have been. Okay. So uh, I want to say this. If you hear me say one thing, hear me say this and uh, meditate on it in your own life, in your own love life. If what you were doing before the quarantine wasn't working, if you were single and single for over a year and not able to find somebody great within a year, something you were doing was not working. I can assure you it's it was not working. So what are you going to change moving forward intentionally because the definition of insanity, as we all know, is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. You've got to do it different. So if you want a different result, change what you were doing. So you've got to look at, look at the things that were not working for you. You have to look at the patterns of the people that you were drawing into you. Uh, you know, there, there is a reason that, that, you're attract, that you're attracted to certain people and that certain people are attracted to you. So you need to be looking at patterns that you have of who you attract because there's an element in you that is attracting them. Uh, and, and it may be a dysfunctional pattern. In most cases, it is. Uh, but, <laughs> but Then there's that. Then there's that. Uh, but I do feel, Brad, that we have an opportunity for a restart here. And a good restart, ladies and gentlemen, this is really important. Men and women alike are both telling me they are much more ready for a serious relationship now than they've ever been. So if you are not capitalizing on the seriousness of all this right now, it's your loss. So if you get back out there doing the same thing, playing the same game, sleeping around, not taking it seriously, using your goodies as bait, and then not ex then expecting to attract a man that wants something else, uh, it's not going to it's not going to work for you. You're going to get the same results, right? Well, yeah. I mean, that's that's you 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 just went through that. But so let's um like I always like to say, let's unpack it. Let's unpack it. So let's let's unpack all this stuff. So what does when you started to work on this principle? that you've been working on for a little while and we've talked about it, but what is some of the aspects that make intentional? What it, What is it about this process that you've gone through that you see that you're telling people, here's what you need to be doing to be an intentional dater or an intentional relationship seeker? Or so walk, let's see if we can through go through, through this those. sequentially uh, to the best of my ability with my banged head. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, Just a slight concussion. First, yeah. First of all, stop what, stop completely what you've been doing, regardless of whatever your results were. Put up, put the brakes on. I would say, Brad, put the brakes on to everything you've been doing, and and unpack it, as Brad says, unpack it all. What were, what are your patterns? What were you attracting? And try to find a commonality. Like that may be, I was attracting narcissists. I was attracting unavailable men or women. I was attracting users. I was attracting uh, gold diggers. I was, you know, I mm -hmm. was attracting people with no substance. I was attracting people that uh, weren't good communicators, uh, whatever it was. So find your patterns. So let's, can I stop you there for a yes. second? So let's, <clears throat> let's dig a little deeper in that. What if that pattern is, is people who you've stayed in relationships, let's say over six, eight months, right? Like, let's say you don't have a pattern of two week relationships or two month relationships. Let's say you have a pattern. Let's say there's people out there that were intentionally trying to date the right person and, and find the right person. And they've been in relationships. Mm -hmm. Let's Such say over, question. let's say over eight months. I think that's probably pretty solid when you're in with someone for eight months, it's pretty serious. Uh -huh. So what if that pattern is, well, I had a relationship last year that lasted eight months. And then the year before that, or that, you know, several years after that, it was a year and a half. And so how do people look at that as a pattern? And what are some things that they need to think about before intentionally going back out again? I just want you to know that there's a million things. So there's yeah. so many, oh, for sure. there's so many for sure. things, yeah, that people need to look at with that. I think the very first thing I would do as a counselor is ask somebody why it ended. Okay. So if you look at why it ended, 
see if there's any patterns with the endings of the, because normally it's, it's because, you know, this person was this, or they did this behavior, or they cheated, or they weren't committed, or they weren't okay. going to be committed. Like, for example, uh, you know, somebody may find that they're attracting guys uh, or girls that won't commit over and over again. But then all of a sudden they look at their pattern and they could trace it back to the very beginning of that relationship where that person told them they weren't ready for a commitment. And I think sometimes... But they hung around. Yeah, I think there's that whole... And I think women do it more than men. I'm sorry. I know there's fixers on both sides. I think that's probably side. fair. I think that's fair. Yeah, though. women tend to think yeah. that their love, their great love, is going to change a man. <laughs> um, your love may be great, but Talk it's about not hitting your head. Change. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, clear that right up because hit your head like I did. Um, you but, wear a uh, helmet. But yeah, I should wear a helmet. As much as I hit my head, honestly, okay, like Okay, you probably weekly, shouldn't say that as a counselor that you hit your head a lot. That's okay. I'm so. still smart. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't lost it yet completely. Okay. Um, okay, so having said that. So there's patterns. Patterns. We go back to our patterns. Okay. Um, and look at your responsibility. So often people want to put the blame on, like, I keep finding these people. Well, you're finding those people because something in you is drawing them in or attracted to it or desiring it. Right. And that's the part that, that is really hard to do on your own. That's why as a counselor, I've helped so many people through that. Uh, but there is a level of awareness that needs to take place. We, there are two people in a relationship there are not just one. Right. And that's another thing I would say to people, and I always have, is that if you meet somebody and they tell you why all the relationships ended and it was always about the other person, they're always blaming the other person, yeah. you you know you're dealing with somebody who hasn't healed, that Check is not in a, in a healthy place. Because guess what? You're going to be next on the list of the unhealthy people. That, mm -hmm. The finger's yeah, going to be pointing at you. Be, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so I think <clears throat> that that's, you know, that's super important that people look at their patterns. So we've done some pattern work. We've looked at, you know, our series of relationships and we've, we've kind of come up with this awareness that you talk about and, and we've come up with, okay, this is what I do. This is what I do. Now I've healed or worked through it or called you or whatever the case may be. And I feel like I'm, this is it. I'm ready. Now what? Okay. Now you're not ready yet. <laughs> okay. So because that's what, you've that's identified the problem, but you haven't put the solution in place. Okay. Uh, so the solution is number one, um, it's not just the opposite. Like, okay, well I was doing this. Now I need to do the opposite of that. So yeah. I found unavailable people. Now I need to find overly available people. You won't like them either. <laughs> um, you can't swing to the opposite side. So now you've got to figure out what it is that you truly want. So what is it that I need? A great place to start with that is what are all the things that I've had? that I've loved, what are all the things that I've had in relationships that I didn't like, and start this ongoing list. Um, like because, pros and cons. Yeah, pros and cons. These are the things I want. These are the things I don't want. And sometimes it's easier when some people are very in touch with the negative, so they know first what they don't want, and then you can take your don't want list. These are the things I don't want, and then, then you can flip it. So then you can you know, turn it to, I don't want somebody who is uh, not financially self-sufficient. So, so that's very vague, by the way. I saw, always say be as specific as possible. You could flip it to say, I want somebody who's financially uh, self-sufficient. But somebody financially self-sufficient, say that five times fast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, somebody that is financially self-sufficient may just be getting by. They're self-sufficient, they're getting by, but they're not, they don't, they may not have the means to be able to do anything outside of that. Yeah. So if you, whatever you're looking for, and again, I just use that because it's an easy example. You need to do that for everything. You know, if you want somebody that is healthy, whole, and healed, what does that mean? Um, if you want somebody who has an outgoing personality, what does that mean? If you want somebody that's fun, what does that mean? If you want somebody that's independent, what does that mean? Right. Because you could say, I want somebody who's independent. I had somebody super clingy and I don't want anybody clingy anymore. I want somebody who has their own life and their own friends. Well, gosh, you swing to the other side. What relationship do you have if somebody's so preoccupied with their friends and their own life that they don't have time for you? So you've got to really specifically identify yeah, exactly medium. what you're looking for. Yeah, there's a happy medium. Yeah. I think the other thing that, that, that I heard you say out of that, you know, with the lists and stuff that I see people do and I've done it 
is don't go in to a situation or like you're going on a first date or whatever, you're making a call or whatever it is it with your list. Well, they didn't do this and they didn't put their napkin on the table and I don't like that. And because that's what we'll do as humans, right? We tend to fall down on all the things they're not. Right. And we forget about all the things they are. Right. And a Thank lot you. of times the a lot of times the things they are, if you give it a little time, will completely blow you away. Yes, people stop Past dismissing. Thank you, Brad. That's a great point. Stop dismissing perfectly great people because they have a flaw. Yeah. You know, maybe Guess what? They, so do you. Yeah. <laughs> look in the mirror. Um, yeah. Check I mean, yourself, girl. I <laughs> but I mean, it it is the amount of times that I have seen somebody say, uh, well, he didn't open the car door for me, so he's out. Or uh, he walked in front of me instead of next to me, so I'm not going to date him anymore. Or uh, she didn't, she wasn't dressed appropriately. Uh, so, you know, for the first date, I like somebody who's a little, you know, puts a little bit more thought into it. So I don't want to go out with her again. Give people a chance. And the silliness with what you just said, and I know they're just examples, but the silliness of that is all of those are fixable. They're all fixable. That's a quick conversation to say. Thank God I'm a matchmaker. Hey, can, can you just like down. not walk in front of me 14 steps while we're going into somewhere <laughs> like that's Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know I was doing that. Like yeah. there's probably a lot of people that don't even know. They just get out and they go. Yes. Right? The car door thing is might be it. That might be on my list. So. Yeah. That's, no, it's, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think we need to know, back to your idea about the list, it's a good idea to know what you want. I mean, it's not that you're walking in with your checklist, but you have to know who this person is. I always say keep doing that list, and I've said this before many times, keep doing that list until you can feel that person, until you can almost see their presence in your life. And then once you feel like you can see them and feel them, then you're ready because then intuitively you'll know when you meet your person. So it's an awareness. It's it just is, an awareness. It's yeah. not a it's not a check mark. It's simply it's an awareness, like a, a presence. It's more like a ding, yeah. right? So they say something and then this light goes off, like, wow, I love that. I want that. And I've used it a hundred times. I want that. Ding, right answer, right? I've used it a hundred times, but my sister was very profound in her advice when I was looking for my first home. And she simply said, Go look at a bunch of them, and when you walk in the one, you'll know. You'll know when you walk right through the front door. You know, they always say kitchens and bathrooms sell houses. Well, for guys, it's like this presence. It's like this this feeling you get when you walk in the house. And sure enough, walked in, I was like, this is it. I did the same thing with church. You do the same thing at churches. You just right. know when you walk, if you're trying to find a new church home or whatever, well, that's you just kind of know. That's and I a think message. that's an awareness, right? I mean, yeah. I think that's what you're talking about. It's not, we don't walk in with our phone and our little list while we're in this, because that's not intentional. Well, you, go, you, so I you love know? your house analogy, best analogy, because this is important. It's simple, right? You, if you walk into a house, you're looking for homes. You only go see homes that meet your requirements. If you have right. five kids and you need five bedrooms, you can't go you into go a house two, with two. three. <laughs> yeah, you're in the wrong house. So you've got that's what the list is for: is understanding your requirements, your basic needs. But yep. what you said about the house, I feel like is super important because I know when I was looking at homes, like if I walked in and here, it's the same thing with dating. I walk in and the kitchen walls are bright red or there's some tacky wallpaper or some, you know, some yep. horrible thing. Uh, it's really hard to look past that. And I've had my real estate agent, like, you can't look at that. Yeah. That can be changed. That that's be changed. easy. It's but paint. it's really hard to look past. It's a great and point. And I feel like in dating, like, it's that's such a great way. analogy. It's perfect because yeah. it is difficult for people. And you see it on the, the shows that are all out there. You know, everybody's popular on the Home of Garden shows I and all that those. stuff. But but you see it because they're like, love one, of the two, I love one, of the, one of the two is looking at the other partner or, you know, the marriage or whatever and going, honey, that's just paint. We can fix that. And, and it is, it's perfect for your analogy for yeah. dating because it, sometimes it's just a coat of paint. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I mean, it's just a coat of paint. So We're not asking you to take down walls and move plumbing and all that. We're like, it's a coat of paint. So back to, so let's bring it back to dating. So I think this is important, right? As we go forward, um, forward, sorry, uh, Southern in me. Forward. <laughs> uh, so as we move forward, it's not about quantity, it's about quality. So screen your people, especially now with COVID, screen your people before you go out with them, screen them well, talk to them on the phone, 
and only choose the top few to go out with and spend quality tr time trying to get to know them. Uh, and I also think it's important, back to the post that we started with, with intentional mm -hmm. dating, if you're looking for love, if you're looking for the real thing, there's a couple things you probably need to do. One of those, make sure you clean up your social media. I'm going to have somebody on that's going to talk about that actually next week, cleaning up your social media. Uh, because if, I can talk about that. <laughs> if you've got a lot of riffraff on your social media page and, you know, well, again, we'll get into that next week because it's a, such a big topic. You've got to clean up your social media because there is impressions that are made when, and people go, they will it's check the first you out place. everywhere. And you hate it. And I know you hate it. And you, but, tell but your, it happens. and you tell your clients not to do it. And I get it. We, we can't. We can't not do we, it. We can. It's just so we hard can. for humans Especially to just. Especially when they're screened by me as a matchmaker, you know, they can definitely do it. Um, and, and I think, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. But I just think it's so hard for human nature to not say, yeah. hmm, you know. So, well, I mean, randomly, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, and she said, if you mention, you know, somebody, like a guy's name, you should go out with them. The first thing the women do is they pick their phones up, and they start Googling <laughs> and checking them out on social media. So if you're, a, you're that guy that's got your picture with, you know, all the Hooters waitresses and, you know, all your jokes are about boobs. On all your, your memes. Yeah, all your, your memes. memes. Guess what? She's she, a good and political. Woman's, uh, yeah, cut the political. A crap good woman's out not going to be interested in that. I know the political stuff. The political is, stuff and, and both sides. It's on getting both a little sides. hateful. That's it's what just that getting, is. It's but getting ridiculous. but and ladies, we have definitely talked about this before. Keep your stuff a mystery. I mean, it. There is something to be said about a classy woman and keeping things that. I mean, a man wants to unveil you. He doesn't want to to have what every other man has had. Yeah. No, that's that's a right? brilliant point. That's, I mean, and and you And don't, that goes for the guys too. I mean, if you're you showing know. if you're showing yourself, you're in bathing suits, the gym bikinis, short, the gym pics drive yeah. me nuts. Oh my god. And uh don't even get me started on that. And you're in like no clothes and cleavage and all kinds of stuff happening. That's and then you get mad at a guy for wanting to sleep with you on a first date. That's what you're that's what you're selling. That's what yeah, you've I mean, been selling. You've been selling your body. You haven't yeah. been selling yourself. If you were selling yourself, you'd be talking about your soul and your heart and all those other things on your page instead of showing those, you know, risque pictures, right? And I want to I want to bring it back again because um, you, you mentioned something there uh, in in the process of is when you're talking about people getting to know someone first, being intentional. You've got your requirements is such a powerful word, but that sort of is you know, your awareness, your, your needs, your wants. You've got all this kind of listed out. But I think we have an excellent opportunity with some of this stuff. God bless Texas for trying to open back up, and we're gonna we're behind you and everything, but be, be smart about it. But since there is still some difficulty in actually going on a date, and I know you don't like this as, as much, but you have a great opportunity to really and truly get to know someone prior to even meeting them. And I think that's the way we used to do it. We used to do it that way. We used to talk on the phone a lot and we used to call each other a lot and we used to before running out to have drinks or dinner. I think people should do that now. And I agree. I, and, yeah. and you have an excellent Maybe opportunity. Always. And it's not I don't want to say excuse, but it sort of is that I don't have to run out and meet you right now. We can talk on the phone for 30 minutes here and there and really get those questions and stuff answered and talk. And I know you talk about like some people aren't good on the phone and all that. Well, get better at the phone then. You've got an opportunity to work on that too. Yeah. You know, so do some things. And, There's and just a lot of impressions people can get from a phone voice or from a personality. Like if sure. somebody isn't good on the phone uh, and, but they, you know, there's a lot when everything comes together as a package. Yeah. But yes, I do think, number one, that you should spend a little time on the phone, whether it's one or two phone calls. Sure. Definitely one to find out where you're going and what you're doing. And then the other part of that is the restaurants are open now. Patios are open. Yeah. So you can go out now and meet somebody. And I feel like that is safe. I feel like that is safe to go to places now. They're very, very cautious. Um, they're they're following standards. Just be safe about it. But you're also in an you're not going to a park, you know, with some stranger. 
You're going to a public place where there is a level of safety, which is why I'm saying they're safe. Uh, you know, you don't want to go to somebody's house on a first date. You just don't want to do it. No, I think that's, I think, and I think again, and we've talked about this on several podcasts before, I think some of that's going to back off too, just mm -hmm. be, for a little while. But I think that we're going to have more dates before people are invited into our homes. You know, and I think we're back to the healthiness and intentionality that people, most people, we hope, will be about. And they're not going to run out and, and jump in the sack, you know. Well, let's hope not. So. And I, I do know, because I've been seeing the posts, everybody's a little frustrated uh, from being locked up for, you know, two months or whatever it for is. Sure. And, uh, and if abstinence is that hard for you, I think there's something <laughs> bigger to look at. Uh, but... <laughs> Uh, that's pause. Funny. Um, but, Dramatic pause. But having said that, I do think, Brad, the one thing I'm very happy and proud of is I, even though I threw the intentional dating thing out there prior to all this happening, I'm actually having people contact me saying, I'm tired of doing what I was doing. I want to more intentionally date. Yes. So, and that word is being used now. Thank God people are in this place we need to use it to our advantage now nobody could have predicted what happened with the pandemic right and nobody could predict what was going to happen after although i was hoping and praying that people were going to be more intentional and they are right now so ladies and gentlemen if you're looking for love this is the best time to look for it <laughs> hold your standards have boundaries know who you are know what you want and intentionally date don't have your weekend full with people that may not, you know, some online date that may or may not, you know, work out. Know who you're going out with. Do, like Brad said, do a little bit of homework beforehand. Talk to them on the phone. Make sure there's somewhat of a connection before you give that person your time. Intentionally date. So can I do a selfless plug for you? Of course. Join the database. Oh, yeah. Why not? Join the database. Like, yes. If you can't be a client, you can at least join the database. Yes. Lovegen.com uh, is, is where you go. L-O-V-E-J-E-N-N.com. And, uh, and join the database. Get in the database. It, it, it at least puts you in our private database for our private clients. Well, your folks are going to be those intentional people. They are. They're, that, we're, they're, not, they're not trying to hook up. I think that's the best way to put the it. The other thing I'm finding too as a counselor is I'm also I'm also getting a lot of people coming to me now. They've had a month or two to think about their life and where they are and what they've been doing and they're ready to heal. So from a coaching standpoint, that part of my business is good too and I love 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 that I have more guys than girls wanting to do this. These guys are are there. I it's it's you know what? It is a sign of strength and masculinity for a man that can do the work. Like it's not for a sure. weakness to ask for help. It is a strength to reach out and make yourself better. I love hey, it's like I always men. it's like I always tell a lot of my guy friends um, when when we get into some of these subjects or whatever. And Michael Jordan had a coach. Yeah. Tiger Woods has a coach. So we have business coaches. We have advisors coaches, around yeah. the president. Mm -hmm. We, in all presidents, he has an advisor team. So it's like, you know, these guys that get, oh, well, I don't need this. And I don't. we all need help. We all need coaching. We're not perfect. I mean, Lord knows you've gotten on me about stuff. So, <laughs> you know, really? We always need coaching. And, and, and it's yes. good. It's a good thing to hear the other side. And, and especially, I like it when it comes from a female. Well, Brad, because. you are one of those guys, and here's a plug for you. And uh -oh. I, but I mean it. You're one of those guys that has done the work. You're you are self-aware. Obviously, we're having we're here having conversations that I can't have with everybody, uh, and that is that's a very sexy trait uh, in a man, yeah. guys. That's a very sexy trait to be uh, enlightened, uh, to be. Uh, emotionally intelligent to have done the work that turns a really smart, intelligent girl on. Uh, so Where are do they? the work. <laughs> Please. If you're a smart, you live intelligent in the country, per, Brad, and you girl. don't get don't out of your house. In, I don't live in it. You keep saying that. I he don't lives live in the in country. A, and he do doesn't not. get out of his house. I, I, my Midlothian is closer than McKinney to Dallas. You need to think about that. It's closer than Denton. It's closer than prosper. It's closer than, mm -hmm. So it's closer than a lot of places that all your clients are. <laughs> so it's not like I'm out in the woods with me and my coveralls and my bloodhound. 
I probably wear more overalls than you do, but that's so, okay. <laughs> oh, y'all call them overalls? Oh, coveralls? We call them coveralls down here. Oh, my so. gosh. Um, and I don't even have a pair, so you do own more. <laughs> okay, yes, I do. I have lots. Lots and lots, but they're cute. Uh, I, <laughs> okay, so uh, so anyway, back to the intentional dating thing. And guys, I, I've spent a lot of time talking about women, uh, but guys, this goes for you too. I mean, as I said at the beginning... You guys have to have standards too. You also have control and movement. It's okay to say no to a woman if she tries to sleep with you too soon. I hear the stories from the guys, you women, pressuring a man because he won't get sexual with you too quickly. That man respects you and you get mad at him for respecting you. So get everything in good time. All right. So let's, let's shoot some honesty out here now to our folks. If you had a hundred men... And you asked that same question. How many times had those hundred men denied a female sex on, let's say, the second or after date? He's not going to deny her. How many men do you think out of that hundred would say they didn't have sex with a woman? 96% would probably do it. I, I, and I agree with you. And, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just saying it's... Our being is not built that way. We've talked about that being hardwired and all that stuff. Whatever. So women are the really same gets... way, Brad. I mean, well, women... I think we're seeing that. We've yeah. talked about that too. I yeah. think we're seeing that women are starting to think, "Hey, I'll get mine too." And women need you know, love too. Yeah, for yeah, sure. We do. But but <laughs> women should also respect their bodies. Women should respect their bodies. I... Men should respect their bodies. I mean, people are running around oh, worried. We do, Brad. <laughs> people are running around worried about COVID. What about sexually transmitted diseases? That's I mean, the funny part about that. Like, for life. It's funny because I can envision, or maybe there was a meme or something on social media, but like these these people are having sex with masks on. <laughs> well, there are you know, there are sexy well, masks, and we even said it. If you're not going to wear a rubber, you're not going to wear a mask. So <laughs> that's know, true. It's, yeah, that's it's true. It's just where we are. So, but but but. It all comes down to self-respect. And, you know, I will challenge you guys because I I have heard, I mean, we talked about the 96% is not going to say no. Guys, it, guys, say no for two reasons. Number one, because you're intentionally looking for somebody and a woman that would disrespect herself is probably not a woman you'd want to be with, right? So you're probably going to write her off anyway. And by having sex with her, you're you're putting your, she's doing it with everybody else. If she's having sex with you, she's doing that's it with the everybody key. else. See, that's the point, I think. And you're going to get a sexually transmitted disease. Let the, me just finish that part. Yeah, you're probably right. She could be carrying herpes, HPV. Who knows? There's all kinds of disgusting things. I know my face. <laughs> Don't do it. But that's the part in the moment that I think guys forget about. I, I know it's awful, but it's like they just don't. They just forget about it. And they're like, right, I'll be all right. <laughs> Like, you know what? And it's awful, but it's the truth. So question that we've answered, but I think since we're on this real quick, because I know we're short on time, you want to get back to intentional, but I do want to, I do want to ask you this because I think it's a huge question and, and we've, it, we've talked about some before, but when do you know is the right time then? Like, cause I see on your post, like something like 90 day rule. So suddenly at 91 days, it's okay. Like that doesn't make sense either. So like, like yeah. there's, because we've all had that physical, hot, passionate relationship or that third or fourth date, it's on. And then we've all had relationships where it's two months, three months and it's on. So when, how it, do you, you know? Get in that tangled web. So once you, once you enter into that physical part of a relationship, it's really hard to get out, especially when you're enjoying that physical part. You know, that's a really hard deal to get do you out th of. Do you find that if that's a good part of the relationship, like let's say the sex is great. Okay, we're talking about but sex. But if other so things are missing, you, it's not going to work. You can't right. Keep but do the, we overlook those bad things because the sex is good? As long as we good? can. <laughs> I'm just, it's that's true. what I was getting to. I mean, if we're going to be that's honest. I was getting to. I mean, as if long as. If the sex is good, you'll put up with some crap. As long as we can. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but having said that, when is the right time? I think the right time time is there has to be an emotional intimacy that is developed prior to having sexual intimacy with somebody. I think it's when, and the best way to describe this, because this would be a feeling, so it's not something you can actually put a number on 31 days or right, 91 days, right. whatever. Um, 
when you have explored somebody and their mind and their heart and their soul to a point where there's nothing else left to find out about that person besides that physical closeness where you are connecting in a sexual, physical way, that's the time to do it when there's nothing else to be said or known. And that is in, that is, it just happens. Yeah. That will just happen because it's a beautiful thing. It's not a sexual thing. Agreed. It's an intimate thing. It be, it's the next level. It's yeah. It's yeah. not a, it's, it's, even though it is sex, it's not really a sexual thing. It's about that level it's that, of intimacy that, that connection you're at. that you talk about in the chemistry and, if and the you've fashion. Had it, if you've had it, you know, there yeah, are yeah. people that have had it yeah. that know when, yeah. Yeah. When you've had that that's connection. A fair, that's, that's exactly right. Yeah. Wait for that. I mean, for those of you that haven't, then I've just given you the guidelines and those of you that have, you'll know, go on that feeling of what it felt like when you did have it. Yeah. Right? Cause I, I, I dated a very smart, attractive, extremely smart uh, and her role was six months. And I never could understand that other than maybe at six months, she dumps everybody. Else, <laughs> you know? And we didn't even make it six months, but, um, I've always wondered why people have those. Well, then all of a sudden at six months and one day, it's okay. Like it just didn't make sense to me. So I wanted you mm -hmm. to, yeah, I know that, that is a, that, that is an interesting thing because people do have different, you know, rules, I would say on that. But I have found that uh, women have tended to use that when they have a 90 day or a 60 day or whatever rule. They're using that to bait a man or to keep a man. Ah, makes sense. And they think that if they have sex with them too soon, that the guy's going to leave. And that is the case sometimes. It is the case. Yeah, but true. is it because you slept with them or is it, be it's, or is it, it's, there's a lot of variables in that, but the point is, is that a man really, a man really does want to work for you, for your love, for your companionship, for your friendship, for you sexually. Don't give it up too easily because once, once you enter into that place, if you don't have a intimate connection with a man, when you have that, when you enter into that sexual connection, if he's already gotten what he wants and he's already gotten the goods, what else is he, what, if there's not anything else enticing him and he doesn't have an emotional connection formed with you, why would he stick around? He got what he wanted. The challenge is now over. And we can talk about, I know that that probably hits hot buttons for people when I say it's a challenge, but women want a challenge too. They do. That's, it can be, look different. Um, but, but everybody is looking for a challenge. They want to work for it. They want to respect the person that they're choosing and and they want to work for it. There's something hey, to be I mean, said. I think most guys I know and friends I've had over the years, we like to show off. We like to show off for our lady. We yeah. like to do things for when her. When you're saying that courting. We like to, when we're doing that, we like to do that stuff because, yeah. and then we like to get the reactions back. And, and it's so much fun, know, people. So. I mean, remember the days when you did hold back? How much fun is it to enjoy that courtship and the tease? Because yeah. once you've passed the tease point, then it's just sex, you know? So enjoy the tease a little bit longer because the tease sometimes it can be way more fun than anything, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And that's uh, intentional. Yeah. That's being intentional to, to, it's intentional on two sides. It's intentional on the female's part to allow mm -hmm. to be courted. Right. So yes, you're right. We do like to chase, but we also like, and we've said it, we also like to chase things that want to be caught. So there's a fine line in that. And Showing then interest, yeah. being intentional is also on the man's part because we need to show intention of our courting. Right. Um, and and actions that we take make to him show. Make work, ladies. So yes, make not him too work. Much. <laughs> okay. So uh, so the key word here for today's uh, podcast is intentional dating. Uh, you should have had a little I, sign. Out of I know. Out of all of the out of all the things that I want you all to think about is you're getting back out there, and we are getting back out there in most cases, unless you're in California or some other states uh, that are still locked down. Uh, uh, we want you to intentionally date. Think about what you want. Uh, be prepared and ready and uh, take your time and choose wisely. How and about this? Let's start a movement. Yes. Let's hashtag intentional dating. Intentional Let's start dating. a movement. We can start it here on Lovability Podcast. When you go out on a date or you start to put up posts about relationships or stuff, hashtag, hashtag intentional, intentional dating. dating. Okay. Love you guys. Thanks for listening.
This is Jennifer. Thanks for listening today. And please subscribe to the podcast. Every single week, we'll have new information. And if you'd like to find out more information or if you have any questions, please go to my website at lovegen.com or you can find me on Facebook at my personal page, Jennifer Styers.